and Mr. Chairman. You know, I think um, some of the points made earlier today that disaster response and relief is historically and continues to be genuinely an area of bipartisan work. And my hope is that we can continue to protect these programs. In fact, one of the things that was brought up earlier, uh, Administrator Chriswell, was the National Flood Insurance Program, NFIP. I previously served several terms on the Financial Services Committee, which also has jurisdiction over uh, the authorizations around the National Flood Insurance Program. And a lot of people don't know that the maps for the NFIP and what is considered a flood zone or not are tied to flood maps from before the federal government even acknowledged that climate change is real. And so we are allocating flood insurance from before these areas became flood zones that are now flood zones. And so historically, there's been a great deal of Republican resistance to updating these maps. My hope is that we can do that now. Um, but I wanted to move a little bit into your work and what we're seeing now in the current information environment, especially after a disaster. Um, Administrator Criswell, recently in North Carolina and with um, these storms and hurricanes that have hit this year, there have been very large scale moments of disinformation regarding FEMA, correct? Yes, ma'am. Um, one of those that I've just seen is this idea that, and I'm going to ask you if this is true or not, and I apologize that I even have to ask you some of these things, but I think it's important for the American people to see in a setting like this, uh, where we have to swear to tell the truth that we see officially on the record that these things are not true. The first being that the, uh, the suggestion that FEMA assistance was only a $750 loan that would have to be paid back. And if not, FEMA would seize the homes of of everyday people um, who may not be able to make that back in such a catastrophic moment. Is that correct? That is completely inaccurate. Completely false, correct? But was it that individual was fired and that this is not a policy at scale, correct? Correct. Now, we know that these are important pieces, very large and influential pieces of disinformation, but I wanna talk about the harm of that. Because if you are a FEMA, worker canvassing door to door, you need to knock on people's doors and see what what uh, what help they, they need, correct? Yes. Now I know as someone who's a target of large amounts of misinformation and disinformation, people will sometimes, and I genuinely want to separate this from a partisan accusation, but it is very important to say that if someone thinks that a FEMA official is coming to their house to take their house away, that's a situation that could be escalatory or potentially become violent over something that's not true, correct? Correct. I mean, I've had people that have come to me in, in an escalatory way because they've believed something about me on the internet that was completely false. Um, and, that, and that's just me, let alone an anonymous FEMA official who does not have the same level of resources to be able to combat that kind of misinformation. And then on top of that, when people do believe these kinds of things, what is the harm to the communities that then get convinced of these uh, mistruths? I think, Congresswoman, one of the, the best stories that I can share with you uh, was when I was in Chimney Rock, North Carolina, and I was talking to the leadership there. And Chimney Rock is the area where there were accusations that there were physical threats to our FEMA staff were. Mm -hmm. We temporarily moved all of our staff into fixed locations. When I talked to that leadership team there, they said, this is not who we are. This is looking bad on my community. Mm -hmm. Tourists may not want to come visit my community, but let alone, we need your help. The people in this community need to register for assistance. And now we have to make sure that they understand that the government is there to help them and encourage them to apply for assistance so they can start their road to recovery. I think that is a really good example of how it not just impacts an individual, but impacts an entire community and their reputation and who they believe they are and now who the public writ large thinks they are. Got it, thank you very much. Uh, Gentlelady's time's expired. Uh, they have called votes, they called votes about 10 minutes ago, but we're gonna have one more questioner and then we'll recess for uh, for votes, but Chair now recognizes for the last question before recess, uh, the gentleman from Alabama, Mr. Palmer. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This uh, hearing has been all over the place from climate change to politics to somewhat on the issue at hand. And um, I, I want to ask you, um, Administrator Criswell, has FEMA made any attempt to identify the people discriminated against um, because of their support for President Trump? Uh, the actions of this individual were unacceptable. And we, I, that's not what and I we do not have any evidence at this point that shows that this was a larger issue, but there are no, ongoing no, ma investigations. Ma I've only got a few minutes. No, ma'am. This is, I'm asking, there were clearly people who were passed over. Correct. Okay. Have you made any attempt to identify those people? Oh, those people that were passed over? Yes, yes. ma'am. We sent another team in there and they have made contact with everybody in that community. So what is FEMA prepared to do to meet the needs of those people who were discriminated against? If they were regist if they registered for assistance or needed assistance, they are now in the system and will get whatever they are eligible for. Okay, and, and those are people who have applied that notified you that they were passed over, or did you discover them by other means? When we looked at the records from this employee's team and found the homes that were skipped, we sent a team in there to contact all of those homes. I can't tell you if they all applied for assistance. I don't know that they all needed assistance, but we at least gave them the opportunity. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is not the first time, though, that FEMA's had an issue with discrimination because for years FEMA discriminated against uh, houses of worship. It wasn't until a lawsuit was brought by three churches in Texas and two synagogues in Florida that this, this stopped. Are, are you aware of that? that? I am not familiar with the lawsuit that you are mentioning. Um, are you aware that, in, that FEMA has had an issue with interacting with religious groups? And I am not. Churches? Um, I, I think it's an unfortunate part of, of um, FEMA's history. And it seems that I, I can understand why there's a built in political bias for FEMA employees in Washington because only about six and a half percent voted uh, of the vote for president and, and the Washington, D.C. went to Trump. But I, I want to ask you, you something else. And I want to go back to the questions that that uh, Congressman Jordan asked, Chairman Jordan asked, and uh, that uh, those people who were on that chat group that witnessed the directive to volunteers. Um, he, I, I'm not sure you gave a satisfactory answer as to whether or not you've contacted those people and, and what information uh, you've gotten from them. Have you, have you tried to do that? Um, as I said before, I have not personally talked to them, but there are ongoing investigations. So will you state for the record that the investigators are contacting those people to, to get their information? The investigators should be contacting them, and if they haven't, I will ensure it. If you maintain that FEMA took swift and satisfactory action after Mrs. Washington's team's message. Why do you think the whistleblower felt compelled to reveal her message to the public? Uh, I can't speak on behalf of the whistleblower. I know that I was made aware of the situation on November 7th. I received confirmation that this text message had been sent on November 9th and I directed her termination. It was not acceptable behavior. It is not how we want to um, treat I people. understand what you're saying publicly, but what matters is what you're doing uh, in the investigation, what you're doing privately to, to clean this up and to create a culture of respect for all people. I, I, and I really don't care if they're Republican or Democrat. I don't care their religious affiliations. I, I think the role of FEMA is to, to provide aid when necessary. And I, I just want to be sure that there's substantial proof that you can offer the American people today that taxpayers who pay their hard-earned dollars uh, to provide for these uh, disaster response resources will not face future political di discrimination from FEMA. Uh, can, can you give us absolute assurance of that? Congressman, we are here to help all people. I, I know, but you did. And I can assure you I that we will take action you, against you not anyone who has not followed our core values of compassion, fairness, integrity, and respect. We well, treat everybody the same. We, everybody is eligible for assistance. We're counting on you doing that. And I would like to identify uh, with Mr. Moskowitz. I thought that his perspective on, on the need to reorganize uh, FEMA and, and well, Homeland Security was spot on. Uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Uh, gentleman yields back. Pursuant to the previous order, the chair declares the committee in recess 
uh, subject to the call of the chair, we plan to reconvene 10 minutes after the conclusion of a vote. So the committee stands in recess.